In this video, we're going to look at using the NPN bipolar junction transistor, which has this schematic symbol there. You can see it there. We're using the 2N3904 right there as a switch. So right here we have a load that we want to control. And we're controlling it with the transistor, but we're using a switch. So I've turned uh, LEDs on and off with the switch uh, before. That's uh, no big deal. The transistor is the next part. The, the main thing is though, this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. If I touch it, I can give it a false signal too. That's uh, something to be aware of. That is why it'd be better to have a pull down resistor for this, but uh, that'll be topics for later videos. Now we're just looking at the uh, basic switch. So it turns on and off based on whether I'm turning the switch on or off, but this is a 10 kilo ohm resistor. That's a one kilo ohm resistor. The one kilo ohm resistor is really setting how much current is going through the load. The switch is just controlling it. So there you can see we got a brighter LED. That's a 220 ohm resistor right there. And so as you can see we got the load there and whether the transistor is on or off depends on whether it is getting a strong enough signal or not. And so as I said before we're using a 10,000 ohm, 10 kilo ohm resistor to the base right there. And so depending on the gain of the transistor it will depend on how much current can flow through from collector to emitter so if we give the base uh, one milliamp of current and it only has a gain of one then it will let from collector to emitter one milliamp of uh, current because it's a gain of one and ultimately you would have a total of two milliamps because we have two uh, current paths if it had a gain of ten then again, we could give one milliamp to the base, it would allow 10 milliamps. Now these 2N3904s uh, and 2N2222, is very common ones, they're probably closer to about 300, to 300 uh, gain right there. But if they had a gain of 100, one milliamp at the uh, base will give you 100 milliamps from uh, the uh, collector to emitter. That's how much it will let through. The resistor and the LED are lowering the actual current, but it will allow that. So that is what is called saturation. When the transistor is conducting fully, at least conducting better than what the uh, load needs. So it's not limiting current anymore, only the load is. That is saturated. So cut off. Right now it's cut off. The transistor is off. The load is not getting any uh, voltage across it because the transistor is off and so no current flow. Now the transistor is uh, saturated so it's on fully and the uh, resistor as I said before is what is setting the current so I can go back to a 1 kilo ohm resistor that was 220 and now the LED is not as bright and there's probably about a little uh, somewhere close to about a fourth of the current flow in the LED as there was with the 220 ohm resistor. So let's just do a quick step-by-step -step build of using the transistor as a switch right here. And uh, so it is uh, pretty straightforward. So the load can be anything. Again, it just depends the setup that we use on how much current we are going to need for everything and uh, there you go so let's yank that again I gave it a false signal when you're building circuits you really should uh, turn the power off but in any case we're going to use a 10 kilo ohm so we have a switch we already have that on the board I'm not going to pull that so it's separated top to bottom and so I could either connect it from the bottom over there or over there. I like it over here because it's out of the way for this circuit. Now we're going to take a 10 kilo ohm resistor and put it right there. So now the uh, base right here is going to be the middle pin for this particular transistor. So this is the uh, 2N3904 right there. We could also use the 2N2222. It would work exactly the same. The 2N 2222 can handle more current. We'll look at that. But in any case, you have to make sure that the pin layouts are whatever the pin layout is. So the 2N3904 
3904. The left pin is the emitter, middle pin is the base, and right pin is the collector. That is the main thing when you're looking at the flat edge right there. And so the emitter of the uh, transistor is the arrow on the schematic, the emitter there. So we just saw emitter is the left pin. And so that's going to go towards the more negative side of the circuit. So I'm going to put that pin uh, down lower because I usually work positive up down towards uh, negative. Also, I like to work positive uh, from left to right, but that's not always easy to do. So in this case, we got positive circling around and coming over there. And so the uh, base is right there. That is the middle pin. We already saw that. Now collector is the top pin. So if we put the flat side to the right, these pins line up pretty nicely. Emitter to the negative rail, the base right there to that uh, resistor, and then the collector up there. Now the load can be whatever we want to control. For this, it's just on off. So pretty straightforward. Whatever we want to turn solidly on or off, we can do so. We're just going to take an LED, of course it's a diode, long lead the anode has to be more positive, short lead the cathode more negative, for it to light up and for it to conduct and light up. So let's zoom in so it's a little easier to see. That's as close as I can get. When it comes to zoom, there we go. And now, again, we can pick whatever resistor we want, and for now, because I'm going to raise the voltage in a little bit, I'm just going to go with the 1 kilo ohm resistor. So there we go. We have 10 times the resistance that we have over there, but we do have the voltage drop of the LED, so it gets a little uh, confusing. Now, we have the power supply to 5 volts right there, and we can change the voltage. And uh, So this isn't ideal for low voltages. As I said before, we're using a 1 kilo ohm resistor to protect the LED. That's a bit much for 5 volts, but for 10 volts, as you can see, it's not too bad right there. One thing to keep in mind. So I did the math right here with five volts and a 10,000 ohm resistor. We will have 0.5 milliamps of current going from a base to emitter. And then uh, 10 volts, of course, will be twice the current because you got the same amount of resistance, twice the voltage. But there is what's called a diode drop there. So this is an NPN, bipolar junction transistor. So that is P material and material like a diode. And it has a diode drop just like a, a diode. When it comes to the conduction of collector to emitter, it does not work that way. You can get the full power supply voltage across the load when the transistor is uh, saturated. So, in any case, there will be a little less voltage, which from the uh, base to uh, emitter resistor, but uh, the base resistor, I should say. But at the higher voltages, that doesn't really uh, factor in too much. So right now, I'm giving a false signal again. You can see that uh, we have no voltage across the resistor until I press the uh, button. And so now we have the uh, 10 volts minus about 0.7 volts right there. And so some of that voltage, as I said, is being built up across the uh, diode there. So we're giving it a false signal right there. And uh, so some funny stuff's happening. But in uh, any case, there you can see. So that's something to be used to when you're taking measurements, when you're giving things a false signal and you're getting a false measurement because the meter is throwing it off. But anyways, now what we will do is, let's see if I can get across the uh, load pretty well. The uh, load will get the full voltage. So now we got the uh, diode and the resistor. Again, we're getting weird measurements. But when I press the button, now you can see we are at 10 volts right there. I may have to lift my uh, power supply a little bit. So let's see what we actually have at the rail. We have a little bit of losses. The probes are backwards. That's why it's negative. But there we go. We got 10 volts to the rail. So there was a little voltage built up across the transistor when it came to the load, but hardly none, practically none but enough to still get it a little warm and uh, whatnot if there's high current flow. But in uh, any case, <clears throat> that's a power that I discussed in uh, earlier videos. So the uh, 2N3904 can handle about, uh, this is 0.625 
watts, so 625 milliwatts, as can the 2N2222. And the uh, pin layouts for the uh, 2N3904 and 2N2222 is the same when it's in this TO92 package right there. It's the uh, same pin layout. I find that to be the case for all of my bipolar junction transistors that start with 2N. There's other transistor types out there that start with 2N that are completely different. But if it's a bipolar junction transistor starts with 2N, so far I've found that to be the uh, pin layout. I have uh, power transistors and uh, it's in a slightly different package but pretty close to this. You can put a heat sink to it though. It has a different pin layout as you can see there. Also it's a power transistor can handle up to 3 amps whereas the 2N3904 can handle about 200 milliamps. 2N2222 can handle about 600 uh, milliamps. And uh, the A version might be slightly different. When you're looking at the data sheet, there's some numbers, the A version slightly enhanced. So it'll be a little bit better, but not always. So for this particular uh, part, it uh, is the uh, same, the uh, current from collector. So now, I have I here, that stands for current. And then that is for collector, so the current flowing through there, which also has to go through the emitter. There's also uh, a base uh, current. Usually you keep it low though, so I don't think it really says a maximum, but uh, they come together at this point there. So you take the power of the two, the voltage across the transistor and the current going through it at those two points. And this is power of the device, or total device, I did write it up there. And uh, so, that's the abbreviation. You'll see that on data sheet. So the data sheet uses a lot of abbreviations. A lot of it you can tell by what uh, is shown. So that's a milliwatts right there. Watt, you know, it's power and uh, p. So uh, so pretty straightforward. The uh, power transistor that I have here is a 12.5 watt transistor. And here it is. You can see it looks different from the uh, TO92 package, the MJE182. This is an NPN bipolar junction power transistor and it has a little hole there to add a heat sink so I don't know uh, how big of a heat sink you need to get it up to that 12.5 uh, maximum wattage but I have a bunch of these and uh, so they're made for a number it has this little uh, I think it's uh, silicone or something but it's a uh, it helps transfer the heat from the component over to the metal so it's metal on the back that helps dissipate the heat plus you can add a heat sink so I'm not sure exactly what you need to get that high of a wattage. That's uh, uh, future topics. But in uh, any case, you pick the transistor that you need for whatever needs you have. So probably you'll see the part number on the schematic. If you're building from a schematic, but you may not have that part number. So you should look at the uh, current handling, power handling capabilities of it, plus the pin layout matters too. And then find a transistor that you can swap it out with because it has the same uh, capabilities. And now we're going to add a simple modification that does something really cool. So, in, in my opinion, plus I made a video on this in the past that uh, is fairly popular. So, we're going to take a capacitor here. And uh, one thing is, this should uh, help false with the uh, false triggering. So I haven't tested it out. I don't know if there's any charge. No, nope, no charge now. But uh, yeah, looks like, okay, no, not if I touch over there, but if I touch this side of the resistor, it does help with the uh, false trigger. So that's kind of interesting. So in any case, what this does, we just added a capacitor there. So I'm gonna press the button, works just like uh, it did uh, before. But now I release the uh, button. You can see that the LED did not turn off instantly. Now it is fading off. So with a 10 kilo ohm resistor, if we use a larger value capacitor, it's going to stay lit longer and then take longer to fade off. And uh, there's still a slight glow because there's a little trickle of current going through there. But uh, in any case, we can do that. Also, this is only uh, 10 volts that we're using. So I can uh, take out the 1 kilo ohm resistor and use a 510 ohm resistor. So the LED is brighter right there. But we have the same effect right there. So if we want it to fade off faster, it also won't stay uh, lit as long, we can use a lower value resistor right there because that will increase the time that the uh, capacitor 
discharges down to it's going to be down to 0.7 volts or 0.6 volts probably and so remember diodes their blocked voltage goes up a little bit as more current goes through them so it's actually going to be around 0.6 to 0.7 volts we covered that in earlier videos but in any case this comes to another point so the capacitor was keeping the transistor on even with the switch open so the power supply was not providing the base to emitter current anymore. So since this is a capacitor, it can store uh, charge. So we're just going to put it directly to the power supply rail. So it charged instantly. We got an instant charge. Now there's that's just floating. There's nothing connected to there. And uh, so now we can put the capacitor to the negative rail and then up there. And as long as we have a connection, the capacitor is a separate kind of a power supply right now not a very good one as you can see we're out of power already and we weren't providing much uh, current but it's a completely separate power supply much much less capable than uh, this one right here but still we were able to use a separate power supply to control a larger power supply so even though this is a switch circuit it's really an amplifier circuit we're taking a small signal and we're controlling a uh, large power source basically and so we're doing that with the transistor we could not do that with the capacitor directly it's not going to provide uh, that much power so let's see if I can wire this up in some way and uh, so now I will give the uh, capacitor an instant charge and then put let's just get that out of the way right now put this over here and see how long we can charge it with the capacitor uh, directly so controlling how long it is on and you can see it was a real bright flash like that so what we can do is uh, take a small uh, kind of a power source right here remember this is polarized short lead with this uh, gray dash here has to be more negatively charged when you charge it that side has to be more positively charged you can completely discharge it. In fact, before you wire it up to a circuit, it's a good idea to attach it to the... It, I usually use a single rail because it's long, but any conductive point. And if you think you have a high voltage or a very, very large capacitor that might have a lot of current that it can output, you would want to use a resistor to limit how fast it discharges or you'll get a big spark. But in any case, we saw we can use a small power source or whatnot. We had stored energy there and it slowly released over time. Kept the transistor on. Now the fade off. So that's really about it. But I do want to get to the active region. So earlier we saw that the LED didn't go, it did go instantly on because we gave it a sudden uh, current from base to emitter. But it slowly faded off. That was the active region. So, as the current went down, the gain finally started getting to where the uh, gain of the capacitor was lower than what uh, the power supply needed to uh, fully turn it on. And so, it started limiting current instead of just letting the load set the current. So, that's the active region. And then, once it uh, got a low enough voltage, it would finally cut off right there but less and less current was going over time so it takes a really long time before it's fully off when you're using a capacitor but in any case the switch doesn't use the active region I think pretty much every other circuit does however and uh, so the switch is uh, simpler in that aspect it's either saturated or cut off we added a capacitor though that complicated it a little bit where we did look at the active region a little bit but it proved some important things about being able to use another power supply or whatnot to control a different power supply through a transistor. So in any case, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.